Yo, what's up? We are now at Nibines Supercharger and this car in front of here is a 2021 Model 3 Performance with the 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. So you know, in the past I've been testing that other car from uh, Marcus Beal. That was a non-performance with a smaller battery, about 77 kilowatt hour. This is 82, supposedly. We're gonna measure it and big shout out to Eve Utleje. It's Bosch Car Service. Bill Expert and Bosch, they're the one who, who owns the car and they lent it to me. It's brand new. I'm gonna show you how new it is. So <laughs> you see this has license plate. If you are look, you wanna look it up, EC now. We are in the EC series. And we use 18 inch Frigus EV studless tires with these rims. Actually the same type of rim I have on uh, MC Hammer, but 18 inch rims. We have mud flaps. These are third party mud flaps. We have the spoiler on. Okay, let's check out inside. Ooh. Okay, so what you guys wanna see is scan my Tesla, this app here. See, we are 99.5% now. That's what the car claims, but the juicy part is here. If you scroll over here. Okay, let me show you better there. There, wait, not that one. There, nominal full pack. On the, on the non-performance, it reported as uh, 73.5 or something. This one reported at 79. That's actually a lot more. Six kilowatts doing than more. Uh, these numbers here, okay, don't, don't mind it too much. Some people are confused with the battery degradation. And this, this value here comes from the BMS. The BMS claims we have 82.1 kilowatt hour when it's new. And I'm not sure if that is correct or not, or how they count it, uh, what kind of buffers they count and all that. Uh, so, but we will measure it. We will measure how many kilowatt hours we can actually get out of this. And the way I understand it from last time with my Model 3 is that you have to take this value minus the energy buffer, is, which is the buffer below zero. And that means you should be able to get 75 to 76 kilowatt hour probably 75 kilowatt hour today because it's kind of uh, cold outside and the consumption is slightly higher so yeah let's see then if we get 75 kilowatt hour from this battery is now at 99.6 it's still charging at 8 kilowatt and it's nice and hot and um, yeah you can also see over here we have live stream going on here we have a little discussion about the battery and all that well now it claims 100 kilo, uh, 100 percent you see so the display claims 100% and you will see, oh, sorry, in the, in the BMS that it's at 99.7 now. So we will wait until the charging finishes and then we will drive 90 kilometers per hour. So this is not a pure consumption test, it's a battery test. And in order to measure the battery, you don't want to hammer it too hard because then you get some heat loss and unwanted uh, side effects from it. So that's why we have to drive kind of slow. So remember, we will drive slow because we are measuring the battery. We are not doing any hammer test here. Uh -huh, you see here, we have been sitting at 100% now for, uh, for several minutes. And um, if you look here, it was 79.2 kilowatt hour just now, the nominal full pack here. Now it's going up <laughs> because we are obviously putting something into the battery. And if you look here, use of remaining also changes. So if we now switch over to performance tab, you will see that it's been sitting on 100%, but it's still inputting 5 kilowatt. And remember, I have the heater on, but the heater is not counted in this one. This one is what goes directly into the battery. So this is actually interesting. This is the first time I charge it to 100%. And we're going to see now the, the values as they go up. Uh, you see, seven, ooh, is it going to pass 80%? Uh, okay, let's camp here for a bit more then. Okay, charging is complete. The car reports 499 kilometers. Uh, we're gonna switch now to, well, we, we can actually keep it like this. Well, now, and then if you look here, nominal full pack is now 80.6 kilowatt hour. Okay, that's important. And then this one is still the same. You see those numbers. Now it says usable remaining. This is the one from 100% down to zero. The car claims 77 kilowatt hour. With some losses, we might be able to pull 76 kilowatt hour from it. We'll see. Today it's kind of yeah shitty weather. So I think this will not be a range test. It will probably be too much traffic because you see over there, people are driving so slow. I will probably be stuck behind 
slow moving traffic and also the salt truck we'll see but uh, let's get the heck out of here all right we're on the run now so uh here we see the road wet road with some salt schmutz fest a little bit of uh, snow coming maybe uh, cruising at 92 so uh yeah this is 90 gps speed but uh, we'll see i saw that on the map here further up uh, at Espa there is some congestion but I get maybe by the time I get there it will be gone we'll see but uh, I guess I'll, just as a standard uh, procedure I will check the weight of the car okay front axle 1000 oh, wait 980 wait what if I lean what if I lean forward <laughs> okay nine <laughs> wait wait 1000 or what okay I'm not sure and then uh, the whole car oh nine what is that the same as the hmm, I'm not sure if that's the same as the non-performance okay let's get back on the road again check out Mjösen oh we have headwind today yes let's check out the Mjösen today oh wow look at this nice Okay, so now we just drive, I guess. Consumption is kind of high. Yeah. Uh. Hey, Google, buy 1,000 diapers. Yes. Confirm. Ship to home address. Confirm. <laughs> oh, shit. We have been driving for one and a half hours and we're gonna turn around here before Espa because one part of the bridge in Espa is closed so we are avoiding it. Yeah, but let's check here, 134 kilometers. So according to Google, it's 132 kilometers. So we actually have one and a half percent error. So we have to consider that also when we do the final calculations. So now we turn around and head back north again. We are now at 50%, you can see it here, 50%. And look, look here. We have spent 38 kilowatt hours. I did the math and it is based on this one and this one is more accurate. It becomes uh, 38 kilowatt hours. So it seems like right now, we should be able to get 76 kilowatt hour. That is a lot, 76. That is about six more kilowatt hour than the other car, the Marcus Beale car, if I remember correctly. Wow, okay, anyway. Uh, we are still avoiding Espa. There is a weird choke point here. They close one side of the tongue. Oh shit, hang on, let me, let me show you better. There, there, you can see it's red. It's a choke point there, Stau. So we will avoid it. So we will just turn around here and then go north again. We've been going back and forth, back and forth north now to avoid that place. And you see, this is not good weather. It's actually pretty shitty weather. And the consumption is 166, which is quite good for this kind of weather. Don't you think? We are now around Harman and uh, okay, I'm going to show you something here. You see here, this is what many people are experiencing uh, nowadays. People with performance. You see, we get power limit already at 42%. You know, some people might think it's something wrong with the car. Well, technically there's nothing wrong with the car, but just the way the car has been configured. So why do we get power limit here? Well, because you know, this is a performance. Ah! I lost, I lost all the focus. I, I, I lost all the pilot. Too much schmutz. Okay, let me keep com uh, explaining here. So, with the performance, you have more available power. You know, potentially you can have more output. And the, the dotted line here appears because in percentage, you have now reached a certain threshold where, you know, you don't have that much power anymore. And if you look here, this one is the most interesting part, is that the problem is that uh, the battery has, the battery has been sucked cold. You see, it's down to 15.8 degrees Celsius. And the power available is supposedly only 208 kilowatts. So the, the way Tesla can fix this is to not suck the battery too cold. Uh, because other people actually have been experiencing turtle mode with only 15%. They get turtle mode already because this car is just sucking it cold. So <laughs> I'm going to make a separate video about this. Yeah, this topic. Now I have to clean the radar.
All right, we've been back, driving back and forth a little bit. Let me show you the stats so far. We have driven 400 kilometers. Consumption is 168. We have 52 kilometers left. Let me show you guys all the stats. It's one degree Celsius outside. This is getting really scary because right now, oops, sorry. The power limit, this one here is 55 kilowatts. And we have 11% left. So this is getting really scary. And what I don't want to happen is that the car shuts down on the highway here. So for safety, we don't want to let that, let that thing happen. So I'm going to bail out now because I've seen enough. If we keep going, this car will go into limp mode, like my friends told me. And it was restricted to only uh, 35, 40 kilometers per hour. So what I'm going to do now is to navigate the supercharger. That will tell the car to start preheating the battery. Actually, it might, yeah, yeah, you see, oh, saved by the gong gong. Yes, preheating the battery and that will actually solve the problem. <laughs> yeah, so if you look here, the afterburners are running. It's activating the stators to heat up the battery. The inlet here rises. We want the temperature to go up because then we can utilize, hopefully bring it down to 5% uh, without the car shutting down. And also again, we can show here that now we get this notification that it is preconditioning for supercharging. So yeah, I bailed out a little bit early, but better safe than sorry. Okay. I've decided to go to Dahl. <laughs> Maybe it was a foolish uh, mistake, but... Uh, look here, we have uphill now. And okay, I'm gonna show you guys. Okay, okay. Get ready for it. Ah! Yeah, kilowatt, power limit. You see, it's, it's dropping as we go uphill, but fortunately, we are heating up the battery. So it kind of mitigates that one. But it is locked. Oh shit, it's dropping like a rock. But it can still maintain speed. But we might hit oh <laughs> look here the power output is right on the spot where we have limit so it means that we are right on the limit actually this this thing here shows you that we are pulling more than the limit look we are pulling four over 40 kilowatt and the limit is at 36 whoa it didn't stop oh shit Okay, okay, whatever. I'm gonna bail out at Dahl. I don't dare to go back to Nebenes now. Or, well, however, it's just downhill all the way to Nebenes. Okay, I'll figure out something. All right, all right, I'll figure out something. Oh, yes, we are finally back at Nebenes. We came here with 4% only, 4.3% left. Yes, a YOLO it. Uh, but it seems to be safe as soon as we heated up the battery at least. So, um, and you see that we spent 171 watt hour per kilometer. It was higher towards the end because we heated up the battery. That's fine. And um, based on all these numbers now, it means that uh, this car, this Model 3, can go 438 kilometers in winter. This was pretty shitty weather today. So, um, and then we measure that this battery has 76 kilowatt hour total. Wow, that is six more kilowatt hour than that other car, that Marcus Beale car, the non-performance. Six kilowatt hour is pretty huge. <laughs> so that's actually one reason to get this, this car because it's supposed to have the 83, uh, 82 kilowatt hour Panasonic battery. And then the real consumption is 174. So I guess right now we are just charging up. We are getting pretty good charging speed. Wow. Right now, wow, how to record this. So far it's looking pretty good. Uh, so yeah, I think since we are already here, I'm also going to record, I mean, I'm going to try the 120 test just for fun, measure the consumption because this car seems to be thirsty and the non-performance. So at least we have measured that one. Yeah, and then after this one, I will actually go to the V3 supercharger, but that will be covered in a separate video. We are now on the high speed run. Yes, I'm going 122 kilometers per hour. So it's uh, zero degrees Celsius outside and it's raining. So it's been raining and snowing and slushing the whole day. But let's see now, worst case scenario, how thirsty is this car? We are back at Nebenes, and uh, this time the consumption was 216 watt hour per kilometer. And then if you correct for the distance error, it will be 219. So it was in fact higher than with the, model, the other Model 3 I tried from Marcus Beale. 
Uh, but it's, yeah, so we see now that this car is consistently thirstier than the other car because it's performance. I don't know if the mud flaps, the tire, the not aerodynamic rims maybe, the, the spoiler, uh, because hardware-wise, the, the performance and the non-performance should be the same. That's why you can buy the non-performance and you can buy the acceleration boost. They just, via the software update, gives you more power. It's almost like you overclock a CPU, you know? Uh, but okay, so that means that um, if we assume, I haven't measured the whole thing here today, but I know that uh, this car should have about 1% heat loss if you go at higher load. And that means that you should be able to get 1% less of those 76 kilowatt hour. And that means that uh, this car has 344 kilometers of range. Today, with this kind of schluffs weather, <laughs> that is considered really good. There are not that many cars out there that can match even this car in, in that kind of range and these conditions. So yeah, uh, overall though, if you compare this Model 3 versus the one with a smaller battery, uh, the, the other one, the, the long range is more efficient, but this one is thirstier, but it has six more kilowatt hours. So they are very close when it comes to range, these two cars. And I also heard rumor that uh, Tesla also put this big battery, this 82 kilowatt hour in, in the Model 3 long range, but they, they l software limit some, these packs to, uh, to give you only 70 kilowatt hour, just like I measured with the other cars to make it consistent. Otherwise, you know, some guy, some lucky guy, he might get the big battery and be like, woohoo, and he gets over 600 kilometers of range, but then some other guy gets only 570 kilometers of range, something like that. So that's just a rumor I heard. I'm not sure if it's true, but interesting. Yeah, but it seems like everyone who buys a Tesla Model 3 Performance, they will get the big battery. Yeah, the, this one is supposed to be the Panasonic battery. So I think that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.